So just downhill from our bulges site is our dinosaur bone site. We call it the bone bed because there are tons of bones here, a couple dozen of really neat dinosaur bones that you can see while you're here. The reason we have bones here is because of what these layers tell us. These layers tell us of the environment that was here 150 million years ago. This was the Jurassic period, the very end of the Jurassic period. Uh, and what we end up having here is something like a vast floodplain, spiderwebbed by rivers and dotted with occasional lakes and ponds. And it's very seasonal. Think of North Central Africa, where you have uh, out on the plains. That's what it was like here, except replace all of the elephants and modern day animals with dinosaurs. And we have pretty much the same thing that was happening here that's happening there today. So we have this awesome floodplain, we have rivers, and these layers tell us about the river channel. You can see this layer is coming along this way, and then it disappears. This layer in the middle is really big over here, gets kind of skinny, disappears. This layer up top is going this way, it gets skinny, and it disappears. These pinched edges of these layers are where these streams are meandering. Some of them are braided, they braid together. Some of them are single streams that meander. We find them all across different parts of Colorado and Utah. Dinosaur National Monument is a big braided stream system where you can actually see thousands of dinosaur bones. It's a much bigger site than us. We didn't have rivers quite that big here. But we do have some awesome rivers that were carrying lots of really neat things. Now, as these rivers bend and twist, they drop off things that are heavy. The water slows down. And that's why uh, typically around these sandbar areas, we find our dinosaur bones. So let's take a look at the dinosaur bones here. So this is a great spot to introduce you to our dinosaurs that we have here. Um, the bones that are here are from, again, 150 million years old. This is the Morrison Formation. And we are looking at uh, an Apatosaurus and an Allosaurus that are, that are here in the rock. Also found here is Stegosaurus. The neat thing about this spot is that it was originally discovered March 26th of 1877. Right over that way, a professor at School of Mines named Arthur Lakes came in and he discovered beautiful dinosaur bones here and started working with an American paleontologist named Othniel Charles Marsh. So this site has been historical for a very long time, prehistorical for even longer. Uh, so we're going to take a look at some of the bones that Lakes didn't find. These uh, were all uncovered during the road construction, but his original quarry, quarry number five, was right here. This is where the world's first Stegosaurus was uncovered. Over there was where the world's first Apatosaurus was discovered. This is an amazing spot for a little bit of that fun history as well as the dinosaur stuff. So here we have an introduction. This bone here is an Allosaurus bone. It is a backbone, what's called a vertebra, and it has these hollow areas in it. Um, Long-necked dinosaurs, meat-eating dinosaurs, uh, they have something in common with our modern-day birds, in that birds are dinosaurs, but also they got their hollow bones and the hollowness in their bones and the air sacs uh, through their skeleton from their dinosaur ancestors, and we can see that when we're looking at the bone structure. This big guy is our Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus is a long-necked dinosaur, about 90 feet uh, is the big one that we have here in Morrison. It's called the Patasaurus Ajax. And this is the bottom of the bone here, comes up all the way up here. This is the pubis, the pubis bone. Um, it's the bone we sit on, but it is the bone that this dinosaur had jutting forward, propping up part of its guts, which is pretty cool. When you're 30 tons, 90 feet long, it's it's got to be a bit, pretty big bone to do that. My favorite spot on this bone is this hole right here that's about this big. It's where the femoral artery went through, which is a pretty cool spot. So we have this. We also have a rib here. We have little bits, bobs, and pieces of bones. Because remember, this was an active river channel, so we have two or three different dinosaurs in this boulder because they were the bones were tumbling around together, picked up by the stream, dropped off at different areas. So we don't have a whole complete dinosaur here. We've got parts and pieces of a few different dinosaurs, including uh, our Apatosaurus, our Allosaurus, our Stegosaurus. Um, we have a Camarasaurus here, which is another long-necked dinosaur, a little bit smaller, topping out at about 50, 50 feet or so. And we find all of their bones here. We also find 
turtle scoots, lungfish teeth, pterodactyl bones. We've got a lot of really neat stuff. The, some of those more, more recent discoveries came from the Morrison Natural History Museum. Give them a like. There are a uh, sister museum here in Morrison. They have the indoor, we have the outdoor. They are also closed right now, but are doing a ton of really cool video stuff. They'll probably be able to see some of our fossils that are at their museum in some of on their Facebook page and some of their YouTube videos that they're doing. So when you're out here, we encourage you um, to come and see until about April 17th. Please do not touch the bones. I know I'm breaking all the rules here today, uh, but just making sure that everything here is a good surface um, just to keep the spread of this virus at a minimum while you're here having fun. You don't want to come and learn about dinosaurs and then get sick. <laughs>